This is example two of the compound interest discussion. In 1777, Jacob de Haven, a wealthy Pennsylvania merchant, responded to a desperate plea from George Washington when it looked as if the Revolutionary War was about to be lost. He loaned the Continental Congress $450,000 to rescue Washington's troops at Valley Forge. When the war was over, Mr. de Haven unsuccessfully tried to collect what was owed him. He died penniless in 1812. In 1990, his descendants sued the U.S. government for repayment of the original amount plus interest at the then prevailing rate of 6%. How much did the government owe his descendants on the 1990 anniversary of the loan if the interest was A, simple interest, or B, compounded monthly? Let's go compute it. So we go to our spreadsheet app, and we see that um, we've got quite a bit to do here. So we know that he loaned the Continental Congress $450,000. So that means that our present value is, of course, $450,000. Um, he, he, he died in 1812, but in 1990 his descendants sued the U.S. government for repayment. Well, in truth, the time of the loan or T in years, is actually the difference between 1990 and 1777. So we do this easily. We use the equal sign to compute. We type 1990 and we subtract 1777 for a grand total of 213 years. The rate is given as 6%. So now we've got rate, time, and present value. And let's do part A. Simple interest. Well, remember that formula. That's always principal plus interest, which is PRT. So we're going to do equals to show that the math, to show that Excel has to do math. Then we're going to do principal plus principal times rate times time. Well, that's $6.201 million, $6,201,000. That's not too bad. $450,000 originally loaned, $6.2 million, not so bad. Let's do this, though, with compound interest. And uh, out of curiosity, how many of you think, just kind of in your head, simple interest will do better than compound interest? Well, in order to do this, we've got to figure out one more thing there must be a compounding frequency and it says that it's monthly so that's 12 so let's compute the future value using uh, using compound interest I'm going to do that by going up here and clicking on my insert function future value is my first one so I hit OK well in my rate if we read through this Rate is the interest paid per period. For example, you use 6% divided by 4 for quarterly payments. Well, we've got 6%, and all I have to do is click on it in the, the cell reference value cruise there, divided by, but I have 12 payment periods, so I have to follow through with that. The number of periods is the total number of payment periods in the investment. Well, how do I do this? I say, well, there are 12 payment periods each year, for 213 years. So we're presuming that they're going to accrue interest compounded monthly this entire time. I don't have a payment because they're not contributing money each time, but I do have an original present value. And I'm going to drop a negative here and the $450,000. And you'll notice that instantly, right here, there's a new number that pops up in scientific notation because that means it's really big. So let's just step back through it again and show you what I did. For the rate, I took the interest rate per period. So I had 6% divided by 12. That is my interest rate each period. I get half a percent, or the DeHaven family gets half a percent each month. The number of periods was based upon the fact that there are 12 compounding periods in a year. And if they're accruing interest over 213 years, that means there are 12 times 213 annual, uh, 213 years for 2,556 2, interest payments. The present value of the interest was 450000 Now notice it gives a whole bunch of, uh, 
of hash tags. An older generation refer to those as pound tags or pound signs. Well, I'm going to extend that out a little bit. And notice it still doesn't show up. So I'm going to extend it a little bit more. So let's just follow through. This is hundreds, hundred thousands, hundred millions, hundred billions. The future value uh, of this loan, if the government goes at the current rate of 6%, compounded monthly is $154 billion, 762 million, 723,364 and four cents. Which is the better choice? Well, clearly, the compound interest is the better choice. I think I'd settle. I think they could give me a cool $10 billion and we'd call it square. How about that, Uncle Sam?